Are you a curious student eager to learn new skills and make your mark in the world? Or are you a professional seeking to advance your career and unlock your full potential? You need to be equipped with effective soft skills like communication, problem solving, teamwork, and more. The Level Up Academy by Doc Leland bridges the gap between education and employment through transferable skills training. Get the soft skills you need to be more effective at work. just still dancing i was like i like this music let's go maybe willie will be like singing for us i don't know i don't know we'll see like bro let's get it going today party time business and party is what we're all about right like for real I, you can't see him but he's laughing over here i can see him on the studio <laughs> like good morning people what's up Anyhow, there's a lot going on in Level Up Academy, a lot going on in the Hounds of Business. Uh, shout out to our, <laughs> don't worry about what I'm thinking right now, to our leader of the pack, the Hounds is Mike Asher Branner. Hello, hello, hello. Um, let's go ahead and let's see if I can, I don't know, oh, that I'm just sharing the PowerPoint. Um, I'm going to actually share my screen because I want you guys, for those of you who are new to uh, Level Up Academy, I'm going to um, show you something that what I usually do is provide information on what Level Up Academy is all about. And we basically are all about making sure that your voices and your story is being heard. I am creating a movement of leveling up the world through education. Now, if people ask me, do you need to have like higher ed? Are you talking about K to 12? What are you talking about? Education just means educating yourself on what you need to do for your own self-improvement. Yes, I am on higher education. I am a professor, but that's not what I'm trying to do with my mission. I want to educate the rest of the world on what we need to be happy, to live a fulfilling life. We have one life to live, one body, right? One soul that I know. And we need to live our life where we're happy, That right? M money, uh, fame, and all that. It's part of the journey and what you want, okay? But at the same time, does that fulfill you? And if it does, amazing. If it doesn't, let's keep going and continuously learn. Uh, and that is what Level Up Academy is about. We're creating a movement of if you want to have value and be want to have value in your life, you need to provide value in what you could give, right? You want to be heard. You want to be seen. You want to have all these nice things and all these people giving you praises, but you're not providing value to your community. So VHS, guys, okay? You want to be valued and heard. You're going to provide value so you can be heard and seen. And that is the movement that I'm creating through Level Up Academy. This is my website, Lua by Doc Leland, L-U-A-B-Y-D-O-C-L-E-Y-L-A-N-D.com. This is my YouTube channel. Um, I'm pretty proud of it. I, I started at 36, 36 subscribers in like April of this year. And I'm at 31, uh, 31, 3.15, 3,000 um, subscribers in about a little over four months. So um, I love growing. Thank you so much for all my YouTube subscribers. I love you guys. Keep it up. I will provide more content soon as soon as um, I'm done editing them <laughs> for sure. 
I'm also on LA Weekly. And surprisingly enough, my brother from another mother today is also on LA Weekly. We're going to talk about um, his exposure as well. Mine is for the podcast, number one, uh, top 10 podcast to listen to in 2003. Um, shout out DFW and babyboomer.org. I don't know how many podcasters in there, but they're in the millions in terms of uh, their exposure. I'm number 29 out of 100 uh, top 10 podcasts for education from Feedspot, 25 distribution channels. And also, let me back up. You're saying, CJ, why are you tooting your own horn? I'm tooting my own horn because I'm using my own platform to elevate my community. Where can you find someone that works super hard to elevate your, their community? That's me, because I want to make sure that your voices and your story is heard, right? Um, and I also have four books now. What? what? Um, and my co-author is also here, Rattled Awake. Uh, the first one is my dissertation. And I compare leadership in culture of executive women in Philippines and United States because I'm all about equality. Women is going to take us, I think Felipe said, because of the COVID, it's going to take us 200 years to have the same equality in terms of pay on executive positions for women. 200 years. We all be dead. Okay. And so what are we doing today to actually just chip it away? Uh, even five years, five years, 10 years, right? There's 8 billion people, guys. So let's spread the word on how we can do that. Uh, book number two is academic publishing. It's in six different languages. I'm going to warn you, if you want this, it's full of information. It is definitely on APA 7th. Okay. I made sure I did editing for this book. Um, and it's in six different languages. And it's like 65 pages and it's about 46 bucks. I know it's expensive because the money to put it on six different languages is kind of expensive. Now, here's the third book um, that made me, it's an anthology. It made me the uh, number one international bestselling author with three other, uh, 30 other co-authors, including myself. Um, and this is really amazing. It's like soup. Um, what is that? Soul for the soup or something that Lonnie did write about. And um, basically having a lot of people's stories in one book and their version of how they provide self-love. So it's an amazing book. Uh, the fourth book, the most recent one, hello, there's our brother from another mother today, uh, basically called Rattled Awake. It was free for the first 24 hours. So when I say get it, get it now, get it, because most of the time you will have to pay for something, but that was free. And we hit a number one international bestselling author. So two times bestselling author. And I said, what can I do to help my community? I'm always thinking about you all. Okay. So there's going to be in the works. I'm putting it out there, the laws of attraction, right? Um, I might be heading a publishing company soon uh, because I want to provide stories. Your story could be the next story out there. Um, and we can partner up to publish your own story. I'm trying to publish two notebooks right now. One is for business journal with like your IRS, your subscription tracker, and a little bit of like gratefulness journal in there as well. So I'm working on that. And of course, my notebook. Um, one of my sponsor, Tossi, Level Up 23 will give you 30% discount. Uh, TossiBrands.com. And basically, this helps me with my snoring. Okay, I snore because I gain 20 pounds. Um, I know that's personal TMI, but I'm going to tell you because that's how I know it works. Um, I have the bottom one, but Janice, sister, if you're watching Team Replay or right now, she, she's busy all over the place. Um, please make that pink one. I really want to sell that pink one for you for sure. Okay, but get your Tossy pillow. This is what you can use it. And she didn't have a picture in here, but literally it's a tote bag um, if you want to travel you know, when you are traveling everywhere and you need that little support when you're at the at the air, airplane and you're sitting and you're like, you don't want to see in this guy or this gal right here. You can just put that tossy and your head does not move because of that little um, divots within that square. And it's supported. If you are thinking of going to Mazatlan, Mexico, my sister from another mother, Sandra, owns this place, her condo. And I mean, look at that. It's like, Yes, you have a pool, but then you also are near the beach if you wanted to. Um, this is her place. Just 
mention level up to her and um, CJ and you'll get a discount from her. My sis Nicole does graphics design, book covers, you name it. Go ahead and hit her up. And then, of course, she... Oh, I forgot she has an audio room as well, guys. At uh, 6.30 my time, PST, for an hour and a half. And it's Nick, right? It's like never in control. That's so true because she is bipolar. She's an amazing sister. We're not going to put her in a box because... My other sister is having a movement called Moving Beyond Boxes. And she is also one of the co-authors on Rattle of the Wake, as well as Nick. And um, this sister is having three international best-selling book, okay? So she's on a lot of anthologies. She's amazing. If you wanted to consult with her in terms of uh, mentorship or coaching and how to move beyond boxes. She has an amazing story for you. My sister, Christine, has a book. She is an educator for 30 years from K to 12. And please ask her how you can create harmony in your classroom, especially if you are a teacher. So Mike Asher, after I almost to say afterburner. Oh my gosh! I hope Mike is not here on live. She's, he's gonna kill me. Mark Reed is the problem. Mark, okay, Mark Reed, not me. He put that on my head, and I can't take it out. Uh, we have an open hall or town hall today, just to get to know who is in the Hounds of Business community, what we do. It's right after this live, guys. Um, go to Mike's. Um, if you're not connected with him, just say CJ sent me and go in there, and DM him. And he actually has all the links for today's town hall at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So literally in 45 minutes. OK, if you want more info on what I'm doing, what I'm doing for my community, what is happening, you want to have a coffee chat, you want to be a sponsor on my show. Let me know. It is in sleekbio.com backslash Lua. Lua is Level Up Academy. Look at this, brother. Uh, dude, we're going to talk about this right now. We're going to talk about this. This is the man of the hour, okay? We're talk about him being on the front cover of LA, 11th issue. Boom, another one from LA Wire. He's actually on a lot of magazines. We're going to talk about him, about how he's helping his community, right? And how where he started and where we're we going with him. And he's going to also be on the Global Summit as well. But I just wanted to share this. Oh, yes, that's my husband. And our English bulldog. Look at their face. This is the notebook that I'm creating, guys. And I have a little girly surprise inside this notebook. Um, but I said, love is blind. A man's best friend. That instant connection. And true love is pure. And yes, there's hair in there. And I didn't edit it. Because if you are a dog lover, your glitter is the hair of your puppies. If you're really a true dog lover. Okay. So anyhow, I am done ranting. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? I'm so excited. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the man of the hour. What's, what's up, Willie? Really? Hey, what's up? What's good? How are you? It's great good. to be in the house. <laughs> right we're bringing down the house that's for sure Ooh, teresa good morning i'm going to be on teresa's um live show live stream as well welcome hi isabel welcome i don't think i have a chance to chat with her from the hounds lonnie yes lonnie, lonnie, is the lonnie salute. yeah <laughs> amazing so brother let's introduce you to our network um Talk to me, like introduce us to thinking back 20 years ago and find within your timeline, right? That's created a significant change in your life that got you here where you are today. Not the five years from Rattle the Wake. I'm asking 20 <laughs> years, right? Right, right? 20 years. Right. How did you start right. it with your entertainment? What's happening? Well, I come from a family tree of uh, musicians. Uh, my mom, bless her soul, she's uh, resting in heaven now. And my dad was a drummer and um, got my start as a musician 
uh, in the church and my uh, mom was a singer and an organist. And later on, I would bloom into this musician and being forced to sing in little choirs and uh, play different instruments like that. And uh, let's just say it was all in my family, a granddad who had a big voice. They called him the, you know, the little guy with the big voice. And so we just come from a, a family tree of uh, musicians and singers and speakers and uh, different things like that. And that's always been a part of my life. But on the flip side of that, I was definitely born into an inner city where I was surrounded by uh, a lot of violence and uh, gun violence. Uh, some of my best friends were, you know, drive by shooters and, you know, yet had gifts and talent. But it was, you know, basically like me dreaming big in a, what you would call a losing environment. And uh, many times I would sneak away from who we would call the homies and uh, sneak upstairs and start writing and start writing little songs and, you know, doing little things and just dreaming, dreaming with one of my cousins. And hopefully, you know, one day, hoping one day to get out of that barrel, you know, so to speak, the crab in the bucket thing. And uh, I think a turning point was when one day it was at my grandmother's house and uh, playing football with my cousin. And it was a sunny, beautiful day. Um, seemingly like it was any other day. And suddenly uh, two gentlemen, maybe less than 20 yards away from us, uh, started arguing. And we thought it was just the usual argument, right? You know, just having a few drinks and barbecuing and uh, we're minding our business, throwing them, tossing the football back and forth. And, we're doing like we usually do, just doing our thing. And uh, suddenly we hear a gentleman say, hey, you know, to get to fussing. And it's like, oh, maybe they're just too drunk or something. And we're about seven, eight years old. And suddenly this guy came back, kind of condensed this story. We saw this uh, shiny object, chrome object. You know, this wasn't TV. This was real life now. You know, we had been used to seeing it on TV occasionally, uh, but this was real life. And this guy, shot a gentleman in his face, you know, in his own yard. And um, needless to say, we were traumatized, okay? And we had made a vow just to see this guy laying there. I think he was maybe in his early 30s. And to see this gentleman laying in his own yard, his family just crying, it was just pandemonium everywhere. And uh, something clicked and it was just, you know, and it was both good and that, if I could keep it real, um, the first thing that clicked was, okay, we got to get a gun. I got to start packing because we can't let that. I can't go out like that. I'm not going to have my family crying over me. So out of fear, right, which is false evidence appearing real, right? <laughs> out of fear, we went and started, you know, packing uh, pistols early and Let's just say, you know, that on the flip side of that, there was something that told me I had needed to use my mind in order to get out of this dungeon, right? And uh, from that point on, I started to pursue music a lot more, the arts. Uh, privately, I would write poetry, you know, up until maybe around 10 and 12 years old, never sharing it with anyone, just to kind of vent, you know, vent out the environment, so to speak, right? And uh, let's just say I had a great mom who was one of, you know, a great dad and great mom, but my mom was more of a mentor who nurtured my vision, my dreams, my uh, ambitions, my passion, right? And so this led to a pursuit in high school to uh, pursue music. And one of my dreams then was to be this radical drummer. I played three instruments, you know, uh, myself, you know, professional studio musician, time and uh, drums, piano, guitar, and a singer. And but I knew, you know, I had this option to play sports as well, and I had to make a decision. You know, they say, hey, you can't play, you can't commit to the basketball team, and uh, you know, play music. So you know, the coaches and the instructors say, now which one is it going to be, Willie? <laughs> I said, well, I, I love, as much as I love basketball, I, I think I got a better shot and I have more of a passion for music, you know? So we're gonna go with that. So I had to give up that other dream, you know, that lied, lied right under music. 
And I pursued that and ended up, you know, with a lot of discipline. And my mom would often, you know, as you can see in my background, she would put achievements in, in front of my face and say, to remind me, and I didn't realize this was a story that she was portraying right before my eyes and that it was it was telling a story and, and it was getting into my subconscious mind, right? And she said, this is who you are, not that. You come from that, but this is your higher self. And I want you to remember that. So when you wake up every day, you can see the achievements, you know, like such as Eastern Illinois College. You know, I was blessed to get a lot of most outstanding jazz performance awards in high school. Uh, I ended up, needless to say, kind of becoming famous in high school. Like I went from just being kind of known in ninth grade and then by the time I got to 11th grade, Everybody wants to be your friend. You know, you're this guy that's playing the solos in front of three, almost 3,000 people at the high school. And uh, my mom played a very intricate role, significant role. Uh, my, my dad on the spiritual side of things and, and my mom on the spiritual, but also the entrepreneurial side. She was always into things, uh, you know, sewing, knitting, uh, creating streams of incomes, you know, out of nowhere, pulling it out of thin air, so to speak. So, so I was getting, getting both of those um, blessings and that, that type of value from them. And my mom just constantly mentored. She spent thousands of dollars on drum equipment for me. And so I couldn't let her down, you know, she would bring me chicken by my uh, drum set. I'm trying to emulate the greats to get this scholarship at uh, Juilliard and Berkeley, which we ended up achieving. Uh, by the time we were uh, seniors. And uh, so she would put all these achievements before me. And um, needless to say that 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 was the catalyst and uh, that was the staple to, to, to catapult me to that next. Now, uh, don't get me wrong. I, I did achieve that dream, but then later on, there were some suppressed issues that had happened to me when I was little. Uh, that you know, you probably have to get the book to it. Book to it. Now, my mom's brought out the author side, not just the musician side. So before she passed away, I was able to show her um, that all of this hard labor and all this mentorship that she had given me over the years that it wasn't in vain, and that I did uh, my very best to uh, make sure that did it didn't go to waste. You know what I'm saying? And what she did was brought out the Arthur side. She ran into one of my books of poetry going back to when I was 12 and, and Tina started writing. And it was private, it was supposed to still remain private, but she went in, you know how moms do, right? You know, like they go into your stuff sometimes. So she went into my little folder and found some poetry that had been writing only to myself and, and God. And I just poetry to just vent about life. And I didn't really even understand, but it felt good, right? It just felt good to. Uh, vent and see your thoughts out in word form, you know, in format, in the format of words. And what she did was she said, wow, son, I know the musician side of you. I know that talented, you know, artistry side that, uh, in music, but I didn't know about the writing. This is some good stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm grown at the time and she found stuff that was like 12 and 13, 14 years old that I never shared, only the musical side. And she's the very reason to condense this a little, um, she's the very reason why I became an author and started writing. And uh, shortly after that, after she passed of breast cancer, um, kind of rewinding a little bit, let me step back a little bit. Uh, let's just say this, she um, was such a go-getter. She had made um, history in LA weight loss. You heard of LA weight loss? I'm not sure if they still exist. You ever heard of LA weight loss? And she had made history, and I'd seen her try so many different uh, diets, and, and she was into health and fitness, and she had achieved, and they said, oh, we're going to fly you down, uh, fly you down um, to L.A. and pay you $5,000. I think it was $10,000. i am sorry. And uh, you're going to be on a poster board because you, you lost a little weight in such a, uh, ex you know, it was expeditiously like the time frame. It was really in a quick time, and she accelerated. And I was excited because I'm like, oh man, mom, like mama's doing the thing. I'm like, I'm, I'm behind you. I'm excited. You know, now was my time to support her, right? You know, to support her dream because this was one of her dreams to do that. And um, before she could even do it, 
uh, she ended up getting a lump on her breast, her chest, top part of her chest. And she didn't want to tell me because we were so tight, very tight. It was my best friend. And this was a turning point. This led to me becoming a little uh, bitter. And because I'm thinking like, wait a minute, this is like a ring. You know, it's like it's like similar to having a uh, convertible, a new convertible car, right? And it was sunny at one point when you picked it up, but when you started driving it, and you had the top down, and, and suddenly the rain started pouring, and the, and the clouds came, and the wind started blowing, and hell started coming all out of the sky, <laughs> right? That's what it seemed like, and I'm like, oh no. I'm like, this can't be. I'm like, wait a minute. You're supposed to do the LA White House. What happened? She said, man, they found cancer in my house. And I'm like, oh no. So me and my dad would beg her to go get checked out. And when she finally, needless to say, unfortunately, she waited a little too late to try to uh, go and, uh, you know, nothing happens by chance. And she ended up passing uh, the year 2000. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, Let's just say that was a turning point. Hey, hey, left is perfect, right? And perfectly perfect, hey, right? we just but, go um, with let's... it. But, you no, know, first of all, <laughs> all I want to... It's resilience. Resilience is brilliant. That's right. We persevere, you know? brother. And, uh, we persevere. Yeah. But That's here's, right. the th here's the thing. That was the turning point. She passed away, but she did get to see me do flood out the guitar center, drum clinics, people who were standing outside everywhere. She got to see all of what she sold into me. And she also got to see my first Warner Brothers check, you know, working with an artist. And she kind of prophesied to me and foretold what I'm doing now. She said, I had a dream that you, she said, I'm so proud of you. And um, you're going to do great and mighty things. You're going to do more things. I dreamed that you were kind of famous, son. I know you're not doing it for that reason. I know you care about people, but you're going to help a lot of people. This is on her deathbed. And... I received that, and when she passed, something kind of died in me, okay? That was my best friend. And also, something was born. And I said that to say this. In order for new beginnings to occur, um, some things have to end. It's all about endings and beginnings. And sometimes we're afraid to end things. And we say we want to see new, new things birth in our lives, but some things have to die in order for some things to live, right? So needless to say, two months after she died and passed on in glory, she, um, I got a, a contract to write books, right, right? from Ingram, uh, Ingram Books and Published America, and distributed by Ingram Books. And uh, these books were uh, based off of what I was, had experienced, like you say, in the last maybe 20 or more years of my life. And now they weren't bestsellers. They were storylines and poetry. I can name them right now. The Crying Songbird. Then I went to Flying Above All. And then we went to Sunshine with the Rain, Volume 1. And these books, though they weren't bestsellers, they were almost but not quite. It did get me into the Who's Who in the uh, American Literature. I was nominated in, uh, to be included with Maya Angelou, Mark Twain, and a lot of the, our heroes, right? And um, that's amazing. That was really the. You think so? I, I think it's a blessing. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. And so that's really my that's really my story in a nutshell. It's always been about leveraging my pain, turning pain into gain. That's why you guys always hear me say, even in Rattled Awake, I talk about taking the high pressure, taking the URE off of the word pressure. And you have what, Doctor? You have press. So that's always been my, that's always been my, and, and look, to, not to freak you out, but to go back to when I was in a cradle, right? My mom, my dad told me this story first and my mom did not want him to share this, but she, she you know, we had this report. We had this great report and we talked about everything. Um, but this one thing she didn't want me to know. One day she found me in the, in the baby crib and my dad told me, you were lifeless. You weren't breathing. You left here. And my mom came in the room screaming. And that's one of the poems in my first book called Breathless Child. And I was breathless and lifeless, no pulse. And he, he said, man, I said, she freaked out. Mom, and you know, but your mom is not, 
you know, she's not easily freaked out. So she was freaking out. Willie, he's not breathing. You know, my dad is Willie B. Jones Jr. My, my beautiful mom's name is Barbara Ann Jones. And she said, oh, my God, he's not breathing. He's cold. He's cold. No movement, nothing. And my, my, my dad being a prayer warrior, so to speak, he came in, prayed, 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 prayed. They prayed together. And finally, breath came back. So, you know, heaven took me for a moment, man. And, uh, wow. Here. I did not yeah. know that. See, now I'm rattled awake with that story. Like, right. wow. I got a lot of stories, man. Right. I love those stories. I love a lot now, of stories. I want to ask you, how can the entertainment industry where you're at leverage education to engage and connect with your audience on a deeper level? Meaning, we have young people out there who dream of becoming some somebody someday. And like you said, we don't know where to start. Like, how do they, you know, what kind of things can we do for the youth, the upcoming adult, the upcoming leaders of our society? What can we do and use the entertainment industry to educate them? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I believe first it starts with um, leading by example, uh, showing them that it is possible, uh, and bringing that hope factor, which is is definitely the uh, dynamic and, and the essence behind uh, Peer Mission Entertainment's slogan and vision and mission, which is to create hope through arts and entertainment, right? I believe everything starts with hope, you know? Uh, without hope, it's, it's hard to see beyond your environment. Without hope, and there's a lot of people where I'm from, they're, they're without hope. They don't feel, they feel like, oh, I have to move to a big city in order to be uh, successful or impactful. Because the idea is not to be famous. It's not to be, um, you know, well-known. It's, it's, it's about being impactful. You know what I mean? And I think that my story, and they've seen me in local papers, and, and what I would like to do is really start to build maybe a performing arts where we can um, school the next generation. And, 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 and you talk about how to build legacy. I believe it's like a relay race. I think we run, we build the team, we show them, we get them together. And first we get the, we attack the mindsets and we, and we show them that, okay, first you have to believe that it's possible. Okay, because if you don't believe it's possible, we're only as strong as our belief systems, right? <laughs> like you can't, you can't override that. We are our mindsets, you know? And I think that what I would convey to them is, let's take it like a remote control, you know, like a remote control and mindset. You can go backwards with that word mindset and set that mind. And you are the remote control. You have that remote control in your life and you can do, be, or have anything. I think it starts with that, just building the faith and belief systems in the hopeless first. And we do that through arts and entertainment, not limited through music, but music was the catalyst at first to get us to where we are now, to bring us to where we are now. And um, and I think then, you know, just by running workshops and starting to do more workshops and inviting ins aspiring leaders and to let them know first that they matter and that, you know, Find the value, like see the value in yourself first. You know, uh, many times uh, we wait to be inspired and just kind of show them that that this is even possible, first of all, because a lot of people aren't going to listen to you until you have the credibility behind you, right? Uh, until you just shown and prove. It's like, show me, you know, we're from the show me state, you know, East yeah, St. Louis, like, St. Louis, like. Like, yeah. show me, show me the money, show me how this works, right? Don't just yeah. tell me, Willie, just show me. Yeah, because yeah. people don't have a sharp attention span and they want to see the fruits. It's like, okay, if we're going to eat apples, I need to see the apple tree. And I want to look at that tree. And when I see you telling me this is an apple tree, but I need to, when I gaze up on that tree, I need to see the apples. Then yeah. I'll be, I'll be willing to even entertain the idea of coming to partake and, suck with you, you know, and eat off that tree. So I believe yeah. that it starts with that, that leaving legacy, like your, that beautiful title on the banner that you had, the promotional banner, how to build legacy. And to show them that, hey man, we need you, I need you, you need you, you need me, and we are on, we're in this relay, life is a relay race, and 
we have to run, 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 run as fast as we can to put others in a greater position to carry it on. Thank you for saying that. That's what it starts with. You know? Yeah. Yep. Thank you for saying that. That's that's where we come in. That is so amazing because that's what we're trying to do with the global summit, right? It's it's basically showing you, yes, this is our credibility, but what can we do for you so you can be involved with yourself? Sometimes people, I think, right. are very critical of others, not because you're not credible. It's yeah. because they don't see themselves in you, right? They don't see themselves in you. So having that connection right. and having... To see, hey, you're just like me. You're just a little bit ahead of me because you've done something X, Y, Z, and Z. But we're saying, yes, this is possible for you if you're going to be involved and be the driver's seat of your own destiny, right? And so this is my next question. Can you share some insights into the latest trends in the entertainment industry and how are they impacting content creation and consumption? Oh, wow. That's a great question. Um, As you know, I've been definitely I've definitely been a part of this uh, uh, entertainment industry for quite some time, a few decades now. And I watch I think one of the biggest shifts that I've noticed and I was a part of this shift working with artists from Warner Brothers behind the scenes and Universal and being a part of deals upwards of three point some million dollars. Right. And what I saw was I saw that hard copy CDs that we were headed towards a digital era, right? And uh, this is way before COVID. And I would be at the round tables with the execs, you know, before I became an exec myself. And I said, I started hearing the execs say, oh my God, man, um, hard copies are going down in about five years from now or 10 years from now, um, digital sales are going to outsell hard copy everything. So now we need to figure out how to repackage, remarket, and that's really where we are now. We're having to find different ways to get our content out. And and the dope part about it, the amazing part about it is, is that we can, the reach that we can have now, it doesn't take as long. Now you don't have to always uh, rely on your street team. You know what I mean? Like I was in the era where we had to pass out flyers, you know? Yeah, that's the door. Hello. My dad yeah. was a promoter as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here you go. Here you go. You know, throwing it on cars and people's businesses and doors and uh, different businesses like that. So um, I, I saw that change in uh, the game has really, really changed in uh, social media. You know, if you know how to use that, uh, we've been blessed to get our music out to maybe like 185 countries uh, now. You know, Spotify and uh, Instagram. Follow us on Instagram too, by the way. Uh, at Willie J PME. Help us to get to 170,000 followers. We're at 169, and you could be yes. the one to help us to reach that goal. Okay. Yeah. Just yes. want to throw that in there. But um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 170. You know what I mean? Come, right. You know what I mean? So. Yes, right. That's right. And uh, I think it's about leadership. Uh, if there's many shifts that's been taking place, if we pay attention on how we even sales pitch and how we pitch our music and pitch it. And it's, there's a to and then record labels, what I, I saw, they were lost for a minute. Um, they weren't, they were really afraid. And I, I was there behind the curtains, the veil to witness this. They were really afraid. It was like, oh no, people are going to be too independent. And you know, we're not, they're not going to need us in order to, and that's the beauty of independency now is that you can be an independent major. And that is one of our testimonies at Pyramid Entertainment is that you can make major noise and still keep your independency. Thanks to, guess what? This digital era and social media. You don't have to rely on the strengths, the strengths of uh, corporate. You know what I mean? And you can become corp- the new corporate. <laughs> That's right. Now, here's so, my next you know, we're the new corporate. Now. <laughs> <laughs> How to build your legacy. So <laughs> let's think about that. How has the advent of streaming platforms like what we just talked about right now changed the landscape of the entertainment industry in terms of opportunities and challenges? Like you said, you know, now we're no longer doing the physical. We're doing the the content. There's like CD Baby and some other things, you know, that, that um, DistroKid, yeah. right? 
all of those things, yeah. but they don't provide artists because my daughter has looked at it and she has a, a Spotify and um, Apple music out there. And um, it's it's hard. It's hard for a, a young artist to figure out how do we do this? What can we do? What's you know, those are the challenge from the artist perspective. What can yeah. you do to help those artists that's upcoming? What are how to build legacy for them? How to build legacy for them? That's a good question. I believe it. And I think me and you had this discussion uh, previously, uh, recently, uh, a product by itself, you can have the most amazing product, which could be categorized as your music uh, or a book or whatever. It's all arts and entertainment. Uh, I believe that most artists don't understand that it's not just about how dope and how amazing your song is alone. Because if, if, if it's not, uh, and this starts with a, a game plan. This is what I work with, like Arthur Flash, you know, one of my, um, he's one of my most uh, elite uh, clients. And we were able to help him grow. He had a baby in his belly, you know, a record called Time is Changing. Now, I was able with me and the team at PME were able to get behind that record. Because he didn't know, he didn't like, I don't, I've had music out just the way you're saying. He's like, I've had music out for a while, but it's not moving. And that's when I had to come to him and say, well, the reason it's not moving, is not because your, your music sucks or anything, or it's not up to par, it's because there's no game plan strategy or marketing uh, behind it. And you need to connect with marketing firms and PR. Your PR is your backbone so to speak, it's like the pulse, the heartbeat of your music or your project, you know what I mean? And um, what I've been blessed to do over the years is get with people like a uh, Steven Wrench, you know, um, the member of Lennox Skinner who found me uh, online um, and I was already still marketing, you know? And I, I was thinking like, well, maybe if I just share, most artists feel like, oh, maybe if I just DM and Boom. And then there's this thing called e-blast. Every artist needs to know that. And, I'm, I, and I've been talking to, to my clients about that. Like you can outsource and use other people's email lists outside of your list. It's the compound effect that me and John Maxwell talk about sometimes, you know, being a part of the Maxwell team. Um, grateful for the knowledge that I've learned, you know, being a part of that team. And I was able to kind of convert that and merge that with uh, the music you know, the musical work we're doing. So, you know, what I would say is how to build that legacy, you you know, get a marketing strategy and get with great marketers and outsource and use other people's resources and collaborate with your resources and do this your email blast and have your own. Yeah, you know really, what there's I mean? a question for you. There's a question for you. What do you think what of you TikTok? Think, oh, they got a question. Okay, I see that. What do you think of TikTok effect on music, specifically the sound bites versus full song and dare say, I dare say even album? That's a great question. Um, TikTok is, is, is like, it's, mm, that is a good question. Ooh, <laughs> there's the yin and the yang with this answer, okay? <laughs> the, the great thing about that, the good thing, news about TikTok, the dope thing about TikTok is that you, you can affect people really quick because the attention span of uh, people today, are it, it's very short, you know, and people like to boom, get right to the point. Um, but then there's this, um, and she says specifically, sound by full song, and dare I say even album. Um, the album part, and I'm going I'm to be honest, I'm new to TikTok, but uh, I'm about a year in. But the good news is uh, the single we put out for In the Morning, uh, the COVID anthem that we were asked to write. I was asked to write that song. You can see the video on our channel, uh, Permission, Willie J. Permission Entertainment. And um, that's over like 1.1 million uh, views now. It took about a year. Ooh, but it was ooh, one yeah. and it was quick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God is paramount, no doubt. I appreciate that. Um, so and I'm grateful I'm for the pause your... behind it. I'm showing your um, Instagram because we need a movement. Guys, 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 Hounds People, Lonnie Ray, Leslie, Sia, Brilliant B Media. Um, we also need 
a brother over here from another mother to go. Uh, he has 255 followers on LinkedIn. We need to blow him up. Yeah. Okay. We need to blow him now up. Now make sure you follow me, but make sure you follow me on my main platform, which you got put yeah. up right there. Yeah. yeah. And help us get to 170,000. Um, we know, need to go. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, and follow us on and, and follow us on YouTube as well. Um, you know, we're over 10K subscribers now. It's Willie J Permission ENT. And uh, Twitter at Willie J Pro. You'll see Willie J Mission again. I try to use the similar tag so you'll know who it is and where the bird I logo. But back to that question uh, with TikTok. Um, the downside is that they don't allow you to, s to really share the fullness or the entirety of your work, the body of work. Um, that would be the takeaway for me. You know, there is a place for preview, like a trailer in a movie, right? You know, you give, you don't give the whole movie away. But then there's this time where you would like, you need this part of the platform where you can actually share your body of work. And they don't allow that. And that, that's pretty much the takeaway. And, uh, and another takeaway is that, you know, sometimes you don't have to have good quality. The quality of your content don't have to be that great to blow on TikTok sometimes. So, yeah, you're yeah. laughing. I know you feel like that. Yeah, you're like, it's like yeah, it's it. here, and then you're like, oh. Like, yeah. like, oh, really? <laughs> Uh, we need to do a TikTok together. I, 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 my daughter's like, Mom, you got to do this dance for Level Up Academy. I'm like, Girl, this is education. She's like, Yeah, but you got to have fun because people think you're just so rigid when you talk about mindset change yeah. and courage. Yeah. And you know, you're like, Just do it. And I was mindset, like, she said mindset change. Yeah, she's like, Mindset change. Yeah, let's do courage. it. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's definitely do, do. I'm, I'm, uh, I have this question diversity and inclusion. Now have been important topics in recent years, especially like today. So how do you see the entertainment industry addressing these issues and what more can be done to promote representation in all aspects of all brothers and sisters out there who have mad skills? Mm. Diversity and inclusion have been important topics in recent years. Diversity is key. Um, and you're asking me how Ask that one more time for me, please. Okay. Ask me that <laughs> so right now it's really a good topic, right? Diversity and inclusion. But how do you see entertainment industry, since you're in it so well put, address this issue? Like what can be done like for representation? I see Asian Americans represented in TV slightly, slightly, not even there yet. I mean, the only person you know is what? Jackie Chan. Right or Bruce Lee, yeah, uh, Keanu yeah, Reeves, he's a legend too. Those right? are legends. But, <laughs> but what, who else? There, there's not that many, right? There's not that many. And Lucy Liu, and you know all of these people that are coming, but they've been doing it for decades and decades, and now they're barely scratching that surface, right? So mm. other than BTS, which is Korean, how do you see that we could promote more diversity in the entertainment industry? I think it's going to start with um, the leadership, the, those those people in the forefront that we need more leaders to get in a certain position. Because what I've experienced is that uh, there's so, everything's so systematic, and there and, and, and it's almost cultish to it to it to an to an extent, you know. And I think that you know there needs to be a, a shift. A leadership, you know, um, with people of power and independent, more independent uh, leaders and execs to get in position um, so that we can create this, you know, mastermind, you know, mastermind of, of, of diversity, right? Uh, and culture and, and kind of reshift that. Um, and it's going to always start from the top down. You know that, you know, and they, they built this industry that way. You know it. And, and that's as far as acting, you know, the music game, you know, it, it, it's it's an uh, infrastructure. So I think there needs to be a restructuring and like we need to reconstruct it. And it, it needs to be more independent uh, people and leaders. I have to say leaders because that's influence and 
uh, leadership is vital right now, right? <laughs> John says leadership, uh, John Maxwell says it quite often that it's influence, and I believe that. And it, but it, and I like to add to that, uh, it's also a responsibility. And I think the people are, who are in position like ourselves need to bring more people on board with more diversity, more culture, and to create more unity. Uh, because there's a there's a lack of that. There's too much of this, you know, inner circle here, inner circle there, instead of just us coming together to create one big um, ball of impact, right? This vault of impact, right? This volcano eruption. So it's going to definitely start with the execs, but from an independent label, because the majors, I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm going to keep it real. They're pretty stuck and set in their ways. And the only time they make changes is when they can see greater, uh, in, you know, higher revenue and growth. Um, money. Yeah, the dollar like dollar bill, bill, right? Yeah, <laughs> the dollar dollar bill. Um, they, they're, they're on the Jerry Maguire tip, you know. Show me the money, right? Yeah, so we need where's people the Benjamins? Yeah, yes, it's all about the Benjamins, the Benjamins with them. But so, I, you know, though it's important, capital is important, but. We need people in place that, you know, who can get to the capital, but, you know, but create value at the same time and and, and create this new shape lift, right? You know what I yeah. mean? All at the yeah. same time. PHS. That's what that's what's VHS, needed. VHS, brother. Yeah. That's what we're yeah. going to need to do yeah. in the Global Summit. VHS, we want to provide yeah. value so you can be heard and seen, right? Provide so you can value. Be heard and seen. That's mm. right. That's right. Yep. Now, this and, and is my judge people and, 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 and set a new criteria, you know, yep. like uh, if you're a great artist, you're a dope artist, you deserve to be heard and you got and you got something that can create value for the world. Uh, skip all the Bring politics. It. You know what I mean? It's yeah. so political. So yeah, that needs to come down. And we need non-political leaders to, to infiltrate and trespass and take that ground and say, hey, man, it's going to be about the arts, pure arts, pure entertainment, pure visionaries, pure, you know, people who are about the community, about seeing change and create change, and it wants to bring people to, on board that's about legacy, because that's what it's all about. Legacy. Willie, I think we need to create a nonprofit for the future. We need no all of the people who have kids that can't reach full potential because they don't have the Benjamins to do it. We should have a right. nonprofit for that, you know, for children, for adults, for young adults. Who wants to reach out. Yeah. But let me, let me tell you something. Look, this right here, Leslie said, just followed you with all your accounts. Happy okay. to blow you up. All of my accounts. Thank you. I'm gonna follow, I'll follow back. For sure. Yeah. See, Thank IG you. and YouTube just follow. I mean, we we're bringing, Oh, Dino wants to dance with us. Woo. Woo. We have a party. Get involved with the rattle <laughs> the way. Yes, three stews coming up on the twenty third. Yes. Just hit up Lonnie Ray. Oh, I'm Thanks definitely for count me in. You, I know you. I know you're going to be on too. With I know you're in too, right? <laughs> I don't know if I have time because of the global summit. That's what I'm doing. Uh, town hall. Yes, there's a town hall. Deanna, yeah, what's up? Uh, this is my next question and my last question for you for the day. If this is your last day today on this earth, what would be your parting message to your current and future families in terms of living life, legacy, and impact? Mm, that's a good one. My, my last message would definitely be this. is uh, We need you to make it. I need you to make it. Your community needs you to arrive. And, when, and what I mean by that, because we're merely arriving to arrive again. No one's arrived. If you're still breathing, there's a next moment for you. And don't give up on that gift, that dream, that goal that God put in to you, because someone needs that and that your value is definitely needed. All of our value is needed. And um, keep running the re relay race because when you're running, you're not just putting you and your intermediate of fam family into greater positions, but you're putting uh, other people, generations to come will follow suit and leave your own blueprint and, and do it unapologetically 
And don't be afraid to be authentic and genuine because we don't need carbon copies. We need the original you and we need everything that you have to offer. That would be my last thing. And, and to keep on growing and keep on going. That's it. Resilience That's is great. awesome. That is so cool. Thanks. That's amazing. Thank you so much for giving us your time today. Thanks You've been amazing. Um, any last Thanks parting you, message Dr. to you. Yeah, anyone, any last parting message to anybody out there watching this? I want to send my shouts out to um, Lonnie Ray and you know yourself, the co-author, and, and um, I'm, 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 I'm elated to be a number one international best-selling author now to add that to the repertoire with you guys. And it was a, an amazing experience and to be around like-minded leaders. Shouts out to Steve and everybody, but uh, Lonnie's definitely, uh, I think it's ingenious, uh, this whole rattle the wake idea. And uh, it's a movement that I believe will, you know, we made history together. So shouts out to all of you guys, man. And uh, we just look forward to more. Yeah, our sister Nick is on Much YouTube. Love. She's like, hi guys. <laughs> hey, yeah, Nick. thank you so much. <laughs> I know. Well, love you, Willie. Um, next time Let's I'm going to invite you, you're going love to have you to play jazz. Okay. Like we're going to dance and <laughs> you're going to have to play jazz in the air for oh, sure. Okay. You want a live performance or something? Jazz, yeah. a live performance jazz thing? I got yeah. you. I got you. We'll set that All up. All right. We'll set that up. I'll be by the baby grand. I have to be by the baby grand then. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Bye everybody. Thank you for being here. Hey everybody. Be blessed, prosperous.